Hi, welcome to Digital with Darren. I have a master's degree in physics at Imperial College London and graduated in 1997. I designed satellites at Matra Marconi Space and I spent 20 years as a quantitative trader on proprietary and flow trading desks in the city of London. Right, in this video, I'm going to go through three different ways of getting data or inputs, a user input into Node.js. And unlike JavaScript, where the input comes from the web browser, in Node.js, the input is coming from the console. So down here in the bottom panel, the user will be typing something in. Now, Node is an asynchronous language, which means it just runs its code without really waiting um, for user input. So it's, it's in a synchronous language, usually like, for example, in Python, or other languages, C++, when the prompt occurs, the code stops and waits for the user. In an asynchronous language, the rest of the code is just gonna keep on running. And there are certain things that the user can do to bypass that or make it useful for them. And there are certain things and pitfalls that they might fall by the wayside if they don't realize this, especially when they move from a naturally synchronous language to a naturally asynchronous language. So in a synchronous language, for example, like um, Python, one might write x equals input, and then a comment to the user, what is your name, question mark, and a space. And that would be sufficient. This piece of code in Python would just prompt the user in the console, you, it would wait in the console until the user answered the question. X would then be populated with a value, the result of the input, and the code would continue so, as forth. But this doesn't happen in Node.js. So we're going to have to do something different. And we can already see this. I've got three examples, three different methods, and they come from three different libraries. One is the read line library here. There's another library in method two called the prompt library. And then there's a third method called the prompt sync library. So I'm gonna go through all three of them in, in due course. But as you can see that each one of them is longer than the simple one line of X equals input something. So going through method three first, this is the require read line. So it's the read line library. What I'm going to do is comment out all of the rest of the code above. So we're just running that particular library. So here we go, comment everything out. And we're just running this piece of code. And what's going to happen is we, we are calling this library. We're doing that by the require function. And then we use this library to create an interface. It creates this interface, st, std in, std out. And then it prompts the user for the question here on this line number 54, rl.question. So read line dot question. And rl is read line create interface. So you've done this function, you've created an interface, and then the question arises. Now, in this rl read line, the code is what the question is, is prompted here. What is your name? One of the parts of this function is that it actually has a callback function. Now we haven't gone through callbacks at this point in time, but basically the callback is a result of what the user puts in. So in this particular case, whatever the user types back in, and I've just named it first name because we've just asked for a name, that's going to go into the, into the program. And here I'm just going to write first name because whatever comes in, so it's gonna prompt you, what is your name? I'm gonna put Darren, and it's gonna go, hey there, Darren, and then it's gonna close. But we're gonna see a, a little extra bit here. So we're gonna call, when we've done this and we think we've finished, we call this function rlreadline.close. Now, readline on close closes and exits, but we're going to see something just slightly different, which is there's two extra lines of code that are not inside the function, that are outside of the function. So we're waiting for the prompt. And then when the prompt is done, uh, we're going to see the rest of the code. And it's going to say the rest of the code. Here is more code. So we're just going to run this by hitting the F5 button on the keyboard or just running it. something. And what we see 
is, what is your name? But then immediately afterwards, before we've actually had a chance to put in our name, we see the rest of the code. And then we see here is more code. So it's almost as if this code has run before the user has got to put in the prompt. Now we can put in our name and the program then finishes. And this is an example of asynchronous programming. The code doesn't wait for the user to input. The code goes along without the user inputting. And when the user inputs, it will then take the code or the input and run the code in that block as and when the user has input. Now, in order to bypass this, if one did want to go past it, they would have to, for example, take this code and possibly put it into the function up here. And then run it. Let's see what happens. I'm not sure what will actually happen. So here we get the prompt, what is your name? And now the extra bits of code haven't been written because they're waiting in synchronous line to be called. So we put in our name, hit return, and then you get the, hey there, Darren. But actually, it's jumped out to the RL on close. So it hasn't actually even run this code. So what we'd need to do possibly is move this cut, move this RL dot close possibly to the lines below it. Let's see what happens. So we get the prompt for the name, put in our name. And then once the name is put, the rest of the code runs. So the order matters. It mattered that the logs to the console were before the RL, the read line dot close function was called. But after the question was made. Now, again, if we moved it outside of that, th these would just bypass it. So we need, we just need to know how this works. So this is one method. And I'm going to call this an asynchronous method. So method three is A S Y N C. It's useful, but if we want something to be synchronous, we have to call the code in line, or we'd have to make a function out of it. So some new function, oops, some new function here, um, code outside. And then we'd have to call that function from here, code outside, and we call it like that. And then that function wouldn't run because it until it got called in its original sequence when code outside was called. So we just have to understand how this works. Let's move on to method two, which is also an asynchronous function. And I'm going to just comment out all of method three here so that we can focus on method two. Now. Method two is supposed to be shorter or more succinct than method three, which is why programmers who do want to get inputs might want to use it. And this um, this um, library is called the prompt library, and it's supposed to do what method three was doing in fewer lines of code. And here we can see the prompt library. And in, in order to install it, we just do npm node package manager install prompt. I've already installed it, but you can see it's, oops. Uh, how about npm rather than np install prompt. And it'll go through and it will install a package and the package will be available and the library will be available. Now we call it, we do the same thing to call it constant and then we assign a variable. I've used PRM just because um, in the method one above, I've used the, the uh, the variable prompt. So I don't want to rename use the same variable twice. So const prm equals require prompt and then prm.start and then prm.get and we're going to do get a username and an email and so forth and it's going to run through it. When we hit F5, we notice the other two functions are commented out. So when we hit F5, it's just this function that's going to run. We hit F5 to run the code. And what we get is 
prompt for username, but then we get more code runs here, more code runs here, and more code runs here, which are these three lines that have been logged to the console. So again, we're seeing that this prompt function is an asynchronous function. It's running the rest of the code before the user has got a chance to put in their username and email. So let's just go there and I'll put in the username, Darren, and I'll put in an email, Darren at email.com, and then the code would have run. So again, what we're seeing is we'd have to, if we wanted this to work, we'd have to take this code and move it into this function. Something like that and then try and run it and then possibly it will run let's have a look in fact i haven't actually tested it like this but let's do it so here we go the prompt is now for darren now it's in sequence the next bit da 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 at email.com and then the rest of the code runs so we just have to be careful with asynchronous programming when we're prompting for a user input where if we want to use that user input for other bits of code, then we need to ensure that the other bits of code run in their right sequence after it. Or again, we'd have to um, create a function, some function like an uh, end would call that function from within the code and that way, or from win within the block in the get statement, and that way the function would run in a synchronous manner or it would run in, at the right point in time. So this is all a bit in a way about running at the right point in time. We do like asynchronous behavior. We do like the computer under many circumstances to go ahead and process other bits of code. And then when a user comes back and does its prompt to continue, especially on intensive things. But for the purpose of um, if, if we just wanted to write a simple piece of code and wanted to prompt and wait, we just have to do that in a specific way. And we need to know about that. Now I'm just going to comment this out and the last method, which is going to be method one, so I've gone backwards in the methods and I'm going to uncomment all of method one, is something called prompt sync. So funnily enough, you've got prompt and that's asynchronous. Well, this is a library and again, we'd install it through the package man manager, npm install prompt sync. I've already got it installed, so I don't need to, to reinstall it. Now this prompt sync package actually runs in the way that we might or the user might want or expect a synchronous programming language to run. And that's the purpose of the sync. It's basically, it's going to stop the code until the user has input the code and then continue afterwards. So we don't have this issue where we've got all of these console.logs at the end where we're going to like print out hello world, hello world and so forth, hello world one and hello world two. Um, where we've got all of those, it's not going to just go ahead and run them all until the prompt is done. And that's the purpose of synchronous lang languages and they would do that naturally. In Node.js we are forcing it, or not forcing it, but we are using a specific function that is synchronous in its nature. So let's just run the code. And here we go, it says, what is your name? We put in our name and the code hasn't continued running. It's not gone down to the console.logs. It's not gone down to the, hey there name. It hasn't run this function yet. It's waiting to run it because it's waiting for prompt to be populated, to be completed. So that can pass into name and name can feed into here. And so when we've done the name, and we hit return, it can then do the hello there, Darren, and then hello world one and hello world two and hello. And that's the difference or the usage of prompt sync. And it's quite a useful function if you do want to get an input from the user, even yourself, you can be the user. So you want to get this input from the user and you want it to change from time to time, but you don't want to have to muck around with doing um, asynchronous coding or making sure that your code is in right bits. Here, I've just done something very straightforward and I just wanted it to run in an order. And that may, this, this particular function for the purpose of inputting makes life very simple. So thanks for watching, that's really it. So thank you for watching my video. I hope it was helpful. And if you did like it, 
then please press the thumbs up like button and also press the follow button below. I will have more programming videos and also some trading and math ones to come too. Thank you very much.